Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the votive mass for a Franciscan, a very, very holy Franciscan, a poor Claire, a Capuchin called Blessed Mary Magdalene Martinengo. She was born in the 17th century, the 5th of October, 1687, in Italy, in a place called Brescia. She came from a prominent family there. Her mother died when she was only five years, five months old, and the lack of the mother affected the girl deeply and led her into an intense life of sacrifice and devotion and prayer. Even as a child, she took great delight in the austerities of a religious life. Despite the many difficulties that confronted her at the age of 18 years, she entered the Capuchin Poor Clares of Santa Maria of the Neve in Brescia. Professed in the year 1706, she spent the rest of her life in the convent. She was recognized in the convent for her holiness and prayer life. Let us examine the holiness of this great blessed. This young nun soon distinguished herself by her modesty, her patience, and cheerful obedience. The hours prescribed for prayer and meditation, as well as visits to the Lord, many times in the tabernacle, were the delights of the day for her. Twice she was a prioress and served several years as a novice mistress. She worked to promote devotion to Jesus Christ, our Saviour crucified, and used her own example to encourage penance and personal sacrifice for the Lord. Her sympathy was said for our suffering Saviour was so deep that she was often found kneeling like one devoid of life. As a novice mistress and later as abbess, she guided the sisters to great sanctity by her admirable example and also her loving gentleness. Blessed Mary Magdalene Martinengo is also famous for writing a beautiful treatise on humility, which says St. Bernard is the foundation and guardian of the virtues. He is right because for without it, no other virtue can exist in the soul, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Were a soul to possess all the virtues, all would disappear were humility to go. But on the other hand, also St. Francis de Sales wrote, God loves humility so much that whenever he sees it, he immediately goes there. Let us take this opportunity now to examine the wonderful humility of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We must imitate, remember, this is the principal virtue, the foundation of all her virtues. Since Mary, our mother, was the first and most perfect disciple of Jesus in the practice of the virtues, she naturally excelled in this practice of humility. For this reason, she deserved to be exalted above all other creatures. It was revealed to Saint Matilda that it was the humility in which the Blessed Mother particularly excelled, even from her very childhood. The first effect of humility of heart is a lowly opinion of oneself. This is important. Mary also had such a humble opinion of herself that as it was revealed to the same Saint Matilda, although she saw herself enriched with more graces than all the other people combined, she never put herself ahead of anyone. Not that Mary considered herself a sinner, because humility is truth. And as Saint Teresa remarks, and Mary knew that she had never offended God. She also knew well that she had received more graces from God than all the other creatures. Let us remember well that a humble heart always acknowledges the special favors of the Lord in order to humble itself 
all the more. The Blessed Mother, because of the greater light which made her aware of the infinite greatness and goodness of God, was also aware of her own nothingness. This is true, also says the great Saint Bernard of Siena, because the Blessed Virgin was always vividly conscious of the majesty of God and her own nothingness. So when Mary saw herself enriched with grace, she humbled herself, reminding herself that all was given to her without no merit, but as a gift from God. This is also why she told Saint Elizabeth of Hungary that she looked upon herself as a worthless creature and unworthy of the grace of God. And this is why also Saint Bernardine says that after the Son of God, no one in the whole world was ever so exalted as Mary. Why? Because no one ever humbled himself to the extent that she did our mother. It is also the characteristic of humility to conceal heavenly gifts. Mary wished to conceal, remember, from Saint Joseph the favor which made her the mother of God. Remember this whole discourse, wonderful, in the scripture where Saint Joseph is pondering and decides to leave the Blessed Virgin Mary. This is the beautiful, this is Our Lady concealing from Saint Joseph in her humility. Again, a soul that is truly humble does not allow herself to be praised. And if praises are showered on her, she refers them all to God. This is also, remember, the beautiful apparition of Our Lady to Saint Bernadette Subru in Lourdes. When Our Lady tells the world who she is, she defines her very essence, I am the Immaculate Conception, but let us examine the posture of Our Lady at this point. At, when she utters these words, she is looking to heaven and bended knee with such humility as if to say, have I got permission to say these words? Mary was disturbed then, remember, at hearing also herself being praised by the Archangel Gabriel. Humble persons are usually retiring and choose the least honorable places for themselves. Saint Bernard remarks, when Jesus was preaching in a house, as we here in the Gospel of St. Matthew, Mary, wishing to speak to him, would not enter of her own accord, but remained outside and did not avail herself of her maternal right to interrupt him. And when she was with the apostles, remember, waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit, at Pentecost, she chose the lowly place. Why? Because we relate in the Gospel of St. Luke, it says, all these with one mind continued steadfastly in prayer with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, who is mentioned last. Finally, people who are sincerely humble do not look for favor. In fact, they love to be despised. That is why we note that Mary did not show herself in Jerusalem, even on Palm Sunday, when the people received Jesus Christ, her son, with so much honor. On the other hand, at his death, she did not hesitate. She did not hesitate then to appear at Calvary. She was undeterred by fear. She was undeterred by fear of the ridicule she would incur when it became known that she was the mother of the criminal. It follows then, Our Lady, Our Queen, that we can never really be your children unless we are humble. But truly, you understand that our sins, Mary, after having made us ungrateful to our Lord, have also made us proud. Oh Mary, today you must provide the remedy. By the merit of your very humility, make us truly humble, like blessed Mar Mary Magdalene Martinengo, the blessed we celebrate today, and help us in that way to become your children. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Thank you for listening. Please remember to click subscribe and to hit the bell for notifications. And in this age of censorship, please consider helping support us at sensefidelium.com. Under the Donate and Support tab, there are plenty of ways to help support the work and to help grow and sustain the efforts of Census Fidelium in general. May God reward you, and thank you very much.